Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our first regularly scheduled uh, official meeting of the uh, Haverford Township Board of Commissioners, January 9th, 2023 at 7 p.m. Uh, Mr. Berman, will you call the roll? Commissioner Gondek. Present. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Here. Commissioner McCluskey. Here. Commissioner Cavender. Here. Commissioner Quinn. Here. Commissioner Hart. Here. Commissioner Wexler. Here. Commissioner Trombetta. Here. Commissioner Holmes. Here. Uh, Chief Viola, right before you do your normal duty at this point, I would just like to remind all the public um, that today is National Law Enforcement Day. So on behalf of a very grateful township, I want to thank you and Joe and all of your um, the fine officers of Haverford Township for what they do to keep this a safe community. And now if you would lead us in the pledge. Our next item of business is our citizens forum. This is uh, consists of uh, two um, uh, two parts to this. First is our registered speakers, and then uh, after that is any speakers who'd like to speak on an agenda item. Um, tonight we have one registered speaker, um, uh, Dory Dowdy. You are yes. Welcome back and Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year is my first thing to say here too. Happy New Year, everyone. <clears throat> so I'm writing, I'm wanting to address agenda item 15 that refers uh, to the latest draft comprehensive plan back to the comprehensive plan steering committee for revision as to form and to substance in accordance with the recommendation of the planning commission. So I, I have some questions. Um, I don't necessarily have to have them answered right now, but just to pose them. Um, what are the specific recommendations that the Planning Commission stated uh, to you, the Board of Commissioners, as to form and substance. What did the Planning Commission object to in the comprehensive plan that was developed by the uh, consultant? What changes did the Planning Commission want made to the plan? And uh, did the Planning Commission mention that zoning changes proposed by a comprehensive plan was not the appropriate place for those proposals to be made? Is there a document that they wrote for all of you to review their findings? And is that available for Haverford Township residents to read? Uh, how may we how may we access to have access to that document? What are next steps? And um, that's my first part of that. So for that, if I may segue to a second part, but if you wanted to answer anything, if that's possible. Uh, why don't you go right ahead? Okay, There's so all of that that I can answer right. So now. this is more of just I mean, it sounds like it needs to be reviewed. It sounds like there needs to be substantial revision. So if it's going to be starting over. I just wanted to comment on some things that were overall. I've been attending all of those meetings from June 9th all the way up into December 8th. I think there were like 10 of them. And so I just wanted to say as an overall thing uh, to say we the residents, property and business owners of Howford Township are your constituents and you serve us otherwise who do you serve if not us or who, who do you answer to if not us since I'm not really sure what the steering committee is going to do with the revised draft comprehensive plan I would urge that you ensure any next steps be well communicated to the entire township the township needs to be kept informed not just by emails for the website but printed means not everyone has an email account not everybody has access to a computer even just putting a flyer in the mailbox can be sufficient just to get awareness out um, using a newsletter is, is a good way to get it done too, but I don't mean to bring this up, but the winter newsletter just did state that the comprehensive plan was approved and being sent to you guys, and maybe that was printed earlier than when, so it, it happens, but maybe a correction needs to be placed in there so that people understand that that was not how it actually happened. Um, clear and transparent, and most of all, please listen to your constituents. We'd like you to work with us, not, not for you to do what you think is best for us, we want you to be involved. We want to be involved with the planning process and not have the plan be done to us. The entire township, the property owners, business owners need to be at the table. The township needs to listen to our concerns and to take appropriate actions that support and care for those you serve. Those affected by the plan need to be involved right from the start, not at the 11th hour. I'm almost done. Please include everyone going forward, not just preferred minority or of nonprofits and civic organizations 
like Discover Hereford and the Brinford Civic Association, Hereford Civic Township Civic Council, respectively, to name a few, but the entire township. Listen to the survey results. It appears that only that one of the lowest priority items, residential housing development, became a topmost priority. How did that happen? When vehicular congestion and flooding were number one and number three as a concern. Make sure that the survey results are in, in the plan and not just in the appendix of the said plan. And lastly, to make sure to include property owners and business owners, as I've said, in the areas that are being focused for change. Who and when was it decided that Haverford and Eagle Roads were to be the focus areas to make the changes of Haverford Township? Where was that brought up? That certainly wasn't brought up in the survey. And lastly, why were 78 of 80 businesses of those two corridor roads not informed in almost two years after the commencement of this planning process? Uh, why did that happen? And it should not happen again. So that's my... Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dowdy. Thank you. I will now invite anybody forward who would like to speak on an agenda item. I will start, as I always do, on the left, um, the front row, sir. Uh, anybody in the second row? Uh, anybody in the third row? Uh, moving to the right. Anybody in the front row? We'll hear from both of you later. Uh, second row. Uh, anybody in the third row? Um, okay, that will close the Citizens Forum and the agenda item. Uh, Ms. Dowdy, thank you. I will admit um, my stenography skills are poor, and I was not able to take down all your questions, but I know generally the topics that you asked. Um, the um, uh, written recommendations from the Planning Commission have not yet been received by the Board of Commissioners. Um, once we receive them, obviously we will review them, um, and we will also seek advice from our solicitor about the, the propriety of, of, of um, circulating them. Um, there will be um, an ad hoc committee created. Um, so this is not returning to the drawing board. Um, this is a consequence of, um, uh, of what everybody knows was uh, lengthy meetings at the Planning Commission uh, level. Um, a great deal of input, not only, bef not only during the Planning Commission meetings, but the input that took place before that. Um, and as a consequence of that, the Planning Commission did what it saw as its job, which was to um, uh, to see areas where it thought it could be improved, and uh, rather than approve it, um, they they asked for it to return um, to a um, to to the board um, for reconsideration by the planning commission um, after some revision and reevaluation. So I know that you provided some of that input, as did many other. Um, business owners and uh, homeowners and concerned residents of Haverford Township. We appreciate the input that we've received. Uh, the Planning Commission uh, appreciates the input um, and um, was probably not unhappy to kick it back to us um, for, um, for some reconsideration and reevaluation. So that is what we are doing. Um, and we look forward to reporting back to the public as that takes place. So thank you for those uh, uh, for those comments. Um, next on our agenda is uh, Mr. Schlesinger of PFM Financial Advisors, LLC. He will be presenting to us on uh, borrowings in 2023. Welcome back. Thank Schlesinger. you. Well, happy New Year, everybody. Thank you. It's the first time I've been here probably since 21, and I may not was may not have been here in 21 either, uh -huh. physically. So. Uh, well, hopefully everyone can see the screen here and obviously right there. I uh, just want to kind of give a background behind who I am. I know some people may be new to the board uh, and the public. Uh, our firm serves as the independent financial advisor to the township for a number of years. Uh, I've worked in this community for, gosh, over 15 years in some capacity. Uh, it's, you know, we're proud to see all the work that's been done here. Obviously, this is a fantastic building, a great community. And I know you have several projects that you're considering this year. So everything we're talking about tonight is really part of a process that we're going to go through. And this is really the beginning stages of that. So should the commissioners decide to move forward with any of these uh, potential projects, we'll be coming back to talk about some of the legal side of it and ultimately, you know, get to the point where we're locking in potential interest rates. So you're going to see some, some estimates on potential project costs. 
Those again are not finalized. We don't even know if we're going to do those projects yet, but you know, based on some of the considerations, we want to kind of be thorough and give you an idea of what things may look like. One of the reasons I'm here tonight is to talk about one process that will be different in this financing that we're going to recommend versus what we've done in the past. And I, we want to kind of talk about that for tonight. So just very generally, for some of you who've been on this board before, you've seen this chart before. Uh, this is just an update of where the interest rate environment is. Uh, since I was last here, rates have gone up, uh, although they are you know, certainly not at terrible high interest rates. You know, the Fed has been raising rates uh, for the last couple of years to you know, remove uh, some inflationary concerns and other you know, ideas that may hopefully uh, stimulate the economy as well as you know, drive down overall cost to everybody. Although in the big picture, it is higher than it was in 2021. You know, we're not at you know, all-time highs in any capacity. We're kind of near at averages that we've been at. So when we've talked about doing any financings, you know, this is you know, still a good time to consider this. What have we determined to do? It should be reasonable and should fit within your budget. It's something that Amy and I have been talking about for you know, a number of months. Things have been kind of built in, so things would work quite well for you. I'm going to just briefly touch on this. Uh, there's a lot here, but just understand when you consider doing any borrowing, what you're supposed to do is consider reasonable expectations to spend money. You're, what you're not supposed to be doing is borrowing today for something you're going to use or pay for 10 years from now. You have to spend the money within three years, essentially is the concept. So all of the items that you may be considering over the course of time have been in your capital, have you been thinking about, and they should fit within the three-year time period. What you're considering financing may be tax-free, it may be taxable. Those are things we're gonna talk about in future meetings, but understand that's part of the major process that we're gonna go through. This page is just a snapshot of what the township's debt looks like today. So should you do no other future financings, uh, as of right now, you have approximately $43 million of outstanding principal. Uh, there's three separate financings that are outstanding. Uh, the annual payments are about $3.8 million per year. That's principal and interest, uh, and that'll be paid over the next 20-plus uh, you know, years, which is quite normal uh, for uh, financings that we've done over the past. When we're talking about doing municipal buildings and, and streets and other things, those are long-term assets, so they're usually amortized over a long period of time. I may come back over the next few years, depending on interest rates, and we may consider doing refinancings. Uh, but that's you know, some, what my, my job is, and you know, hopefully you'll see me at some point in the near future. This page here, again, just for informational purposes, is a potential plan of finance. There are several different alternatives of what you could finance. What we've been generally talking about has been the library project. That's the largest uh, item that could be considered. Uh, there are other items that are on, on the list that you may consider financing. You may not as well. So we've built a plan here that gives some estimates of what those payments could look like from a funding source. And should interest rates remain in a reasonable manner, this is what the annual payments would look like if you were to borrow all the money associated with these particular projects. Should you decide not to do those projects in the future, we'll just pull this off the, the plan. But we want to at least give you an idea of what that would look like. I'm going to only turn to the next page. This really, although it's very small in, in, in uh, font, as you can see, there's a lot of steps associated with moving forward with any transaction. For tonight, what I'd like to talk about is the process to select a bond underwriter. What a bond underwriter is, it's essentially a bank that's going to provide investors to purchase the bonds on behalf of the public. In the past, we've always used a competitive process. Essentially, the concept would be that we put out a potential bond issue over what is called the PFM auction website. It's the eBay of municipal bonds, where investors would come on the website and bid as many times as they can. Let's say the Christie's of municipal there bonds. There you go. We're going to well, you saw that these are okay. Christie's. Yeah. Yeah, we get the, we get the high-level one here. Yeah. Uh, this particular site allows investors to buy your bonds and whoever pr produces the lowest overall interest rate wins. That's what we traditionally recommend and what we do almost every time. Because of the potential financings that we may consider, it 
puts us in a predicament in the sense that we, I recommend that we do not utilize the full competitive process because we have to fit certain conditions of tax, uh, a tax situation. So I'm recommending we use something called a hybrid process where we would go and I would work on your behalf, work with your administration, and we would solicit with a number of underwriting firms. They'd provide us a proposal back over the coming weeks and we would at, we'd ask them to provide us proposed interest rates and their costs associated with doing a transaction. We would use a competitive process and the overall cost and interest rates to determine who the lowest lender would be. Although they're not locking in the interest rates at that time, this would help us provide a competitive process. Whoever provides us the lowest cost is the winner. So it's essentially doing what we were gonna do over the internet, but just through a, a, a little different process. By doing this, this will allow us the flexibility to fit within some of the conditions that I need and your rest of your financing team need to accomplish the transaction in a, in, a, in a reasonable manner. So although this is not exactly the way we've done it in the past, we'd like to use a hybrid process, which would be a competitive process, just a little bit different than what we've done previously. Mr. Schlesinger, we have used, I mean, we have used underwriters in the past and done official yes, statements. Of you have. We, several years ago, not several, I think it was in 2019, feels like a couple years ago, we put together a, uh, a debt management policy that, that was approved by the board. And, and in that policy, one of the requirements was that if we utilize any public financing, we would use a, a full competitive process. In this case, since I'm recommending something different, we're coming here to talk to you tonight to say this is a little bit different and we'd like you to consider this alternative. Right, and we cooked that flexibility into that, yes. those, 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 those debt regulations that's, that, we, that's exactly right. that we adopted. That's exactly to deal with exactly right. this situation. Exactly right, because sometimes the market doesn't allow us to do that every time, and this is a particular case that is, we'd like you to do it a little bit differently. I believe you'll get excellent execution. We would be working on your behalf as a fiduciary to negotiate the terms and conditions and the overall interest rates when the time comes. All we're asking for tonight is the consideration to go through the competitive process to determine who the, the financing partner would be as we move forward while you determine what the projects will end up being. So I'll stop. I know there was, it's a little bit different than what we've done in the past, but if you think about it, the idea is it's kind of like you go shopping for a car, you may call five different dealerships and ask them for the cost of the car and what the interest rate that, that they're going to offer you from their financing company. It's kind of the same idea here. We're going to shop around to, you know, four or five different underwriting shops. We'll have them provide us their results. We'll analyze them and provide you a report back and a recommendation which way to go. And is one of those, is, is one of the things that makes up the total cost of the bond, the actual price per bond by the underwriter? Yes. Is that this, is that primarily the distinguishing function, uh, the, the, distinguishing feature between underwriters? Yeah, well, well, potentially, and I'll go back to that previous page. Mm -hmm. I know these aren't final, but you know, if we're talking about several million dollars, you know, it could be 20 plus million dollars, the difference in the interest rate itself or the price of the bonds is really the major component associated with the, what, it's gonna, what the cost is to the district, uh, the township. So there is a cost associated with their commissions. We're gonna ask them to provide that to us as well, but the, between their commission cost and the estimated interest rates or the spreads that they're gonna provide us, that'll give us the full scope of who is the best alternative. But to your, to your point, what drives this is the underlying interest rate. My job is to make sure to maintain and get you the best deal possible once it's all said and done. And that's what our firm will do for you. I'm only gonna go back to that very long page again. The top section of this is really just the beginning. Maybe I can make it larger, I don't know. Let's see. We all have. Ah, no, I went back to the wrong page. There's a view here. Let's go like 150, see if that works. There you go. So, oh boy. That's not going to be speech. I was getting there. There you go. So, the process here, as I said, we've talked to the Finance Committee. We're here tonight to at least talk about the, the authorization for the underwriter process. 
And again, this is a preliminary timeline, but you have several reports coming over the next coming months uh, with some estimates that you may consider. So as you make some determinations of those projects, you know, me and the rest of the finance team will be joining and coming back to future meetings to ask you to consider other items such as uh, approving some ordinances and necessary advertising associated with that. So that will come over the coming months. The important parts of that will, will happen. We'll also work with, with Amy and Dave to get the rating completed. Uh, for anyone in the audience, the township is rated AAA, which is the best you can be. So that gets you very strong interest rates. We'll go through that process as well. And as that happens, if all goes well, you'll have your money locked up, hopefully sometime maybe in March, with settlement in April. Again, determining that timeline based on when you make a decision on what you want to do. I'll stop if anyone has any other questions. I think I have a question. Sure. Hi. Um, can you explain again exactly what the benefit is of just selecting like five potential underwriter um, companies as opposed to expanding it, you know, to everyone and then getting the lowest bid? Yeah, so the, the, the old way or the way we traditionally do it, when we put that up on auction, the underwriters that are part of that service have access to bid as you know, any of them can join this, the auction and bid as many times as they want. When we do the hybrid process, we traditionally narrow it down to around five, which are more traditionally uh, underwriters that kind of work in Pennsylvania. So you may get some that may not generally, someone from Tennessee as an example, may bid on the competitive process. In this particular case, because of the potential condition associated with one of the purposes of the project, doing that is impossible because one of the things that we have to follow is a certain rule under tax code that says we can't go above a certain cost that's associated with this, and this process would remove that risk completely. So I'd love to say I can go to 100 underwriters and evaluate them for you. I think going to kind of five here is strong you'll get great results these are banks or underwriters that are very active in pennsylvania that we're suggesting and you know once they kind of come back with their bids you'll know which one's the best at that time thank you sure and mr schlesinger that is um, that is a consequence of our anticipated financing for work on the stadium and work in the library, is that correct? The library is the, the biggest one because it will be considered a 501c3 transaction and that fits within a, a different area within tax, tax law that says you have to, you can't have more than 2% total costs and potentially on the old way, you could have a place where you'd have a higher cost but a lower interest rate and that doesn't, that changes the concept here, and I don't want to put us in a position where we have too high of a cost and that doesn't make the transaction work. So this will stop that from happening. One thing I keep pointing at, what's really important here is, once we determine the underwriter, my group, we have a, a special pricing group that works out of our Charlotte office. They're actually going to be working with me and we're going to be negotiating the interest rates prior to the sale itself. So we're going to be using data from all of the financings that we work with throughout the country and compared it to other AAAs. So we have a, a separate group that works directly with the negotiated process on the interest rate. So I feel very confident you're gonna get incredible execution by working you know, with, with our group here. So I'm not worried about that. This just kind of formalizes the process in a better manner in this case. I do have a question just for the clarification, just for knowledge of the board and also the people that are watching this. So if we go with the, the hybrid way of rather than just kind of going out on the open market, picking a select basket of existing un, uh, underwriters mm -hmm. um, and then basically letting them kind of compete against exactly. each other for it, what if any relationship do you or your firm have with any of these prospective underwriters? We have no relationship. We're, we're a fiduciary, so we're an independent underwriter, an independent financial advisor. So. Well, the way we're going to do this is utilize a, a true interest cost calculation, much like how the internet auction would have occurred. So we're going to we're going to ask them to provide us their cost and their proposed interest rates at the time of the bidding process, and that determination there will will determine who the winner is. It'll be based on whoever the lowest rate is. We're going to help select which underwriters to work with, based on 
the amount of uh, issues that they've done in the past, their qualified status within Pennsylvania. And you'll, once we, we'll know the, you'll know the, the, the underwriters that we're selecting. They're very you know, large enough and, and very active in Pennsylvania. But yeah, from, a, from a relationship standpoint, we're serving as your fiduciary here. Okay. Um, and I know that this, this question is a little bit outside of why you're here to get us to approve an underwriter. Sure. But since I have you, uh, I do have two questions just with regards to the process. You know, you had highlighted the fact that Hafford Township does maintain a uh, AAA bond rating. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what we're looking at, and, and again, just to clarify for anyone who's here or anyone who's watching this, um, you know, we have not approved or agreed on any specific project or any specific dollar amount. This is this is all the preliminary phase. But, you know, what we're looking at is potentially a substantial expansion of the uh, debt load for the township. Do you have any concerns or are there any issues with that expansion of the debt load to the township hurting our credit, our credit rating? No, that's, that's a great question. So I, there's a couple things that, that, that fall within how we would think about the impact on your credit rating. So number one, the rating agency in this case is Moody's Investor Service. So when, when they consider your rating, they look at many, many items. Debt is definitely one of them. The debt capacity of, of the township is, is one of the, the biggest ones. However, uh, what also drives is the wealth levels, the capacity of the township's uh, growth. This is a large township that's you know, grown in a good capacity. Uh, it's very stable in, in some sense as well. You've been here and you've done you know, good work over the period of, uh, over a number of years. The amount of debt itself, yes, it's a, it's a larger burden than you have currently. Uh, you do pay back debt over the course of time. And you go back to that previous page, if I can get there. There's a, a summary that showed you had... Um, it's page three. Yeah, I'm trying to get there. Let's see, there you go. Go that way. There you go. So you can see you have some serious amount of debt being paid back on the 2018 issue over the next seven years. So over the course of time, you know, a significant amount of principal gets paid here over the course of time. The capacity of how much you're allowed to borrow is based on something called borrowing capacity under the Commonwealth's rules, which essentially is the three here historic uh, average of the total revenues of the township. You have over $40 million of annual uh, revenues on the general fund side, but probably higher than that with others. So in total, you're allowed to do 225% of that number. So you have significant borrowing capacity. Where there becomes issues if there's too much leverage against the township revenues and the ability to raise taxes if necessary, in this case, your taxes are, are reasonable. And the fact that we're going to potentially amortize this over a long enough period of time, there shouldn't be any major concerns with the payback of debt. So considering this is probably your last major borrowing, potentially, Maybe there's some smaller ones over the course of time. I think the, the Moody's is aware of this because we've con considered this a number of years. They won't be surprised by the fact that we're, we're coming to market with something of this size potentially. So they do look at the amount of debt you have outstanding. They do look at your reserves. They do look at the demographics of the area, the location where you are. All of those things kind of get put together in their credit process. If they had concerns, they would let us know at the time of the rating process. We've done some internal due diligence. Uh, we have our own kind of internal programs that help figure out what your credit rating would be as well. As of right now, we don't think there's any concerns at this point. But you know, if there were some major changes on the, uh, the uh, demographics of the township or the wealth levels or location, things changed dramatically, there maybe could be you know, an impact on your rating in the future. But, Obviously, maintaining the AAA is definitely paramount on what we want to do. As I know Amy and I have talked about it a number of times, so we want to make sure that this is something we're going to do for a long period of time and have that great rating. So I wouldn't worry too much, but you know, if we start to get some feedback through the rating process that something would change, you'll certainly know uh, as we're going through the process. How often does, does Moody's review us? Every year. So it's an annual process. It's not 
yeah. random. It's, it's yeah. Every so year. they they'll do an annual surveillance on their own, uh, but anytime we issue debt, we go through a formal rating process as well on the debt side. So okay. they're required. They're essentially required to do it annually as a surveillance. That's partly you know, after the 2009 financial crisis that kind of changed some of the rules and regulations of the other rating agencies, and that's become a, a, a best practice of the rating agencies going forward. That they do. And last question I have is, and I'm glad you have it up on screen three. Sure. So it looks under the general obligation bond series 2018 that there's a substantial annual change in what we repay between 2030 and 2031. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, my, I'm pretty certain that was, this keeps moving on me. Um, that was due to, it probably had a refinancing in it. So, the, so we probably had some previous debt that we refinanced that was shorter. And then we added on new money after that is my guess. Okay. So yeah, it, was, it wasn't anything out of the ordinary. We just kind of consolidated some debt at some point, some point in time. So we never, anytime we do refinancing, we don't stretch anything out. And, and I think at the bottom of the page, it does make reference to refinancing. So I guess that would explain it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate the, the uh, answers. Yeah. And just to point out, anytime we do do a financing, we determine the useful lives of the particular projects to help us determine the length of what we're financing. So we're certainly not going to finance a police car over 30 years. But if we're doing something like a building or a library or something like that, that'll have, that could have a longer amortization. Well, actually, with that in mind, what what is I guess what are the parameters on the length of amortization? What like what's the maximum? What's the, what are you expecting? What's the average? If there, if that, there is such a thing, generally speaking, we normally see thirty. The most is traditionally about thirty years, uh, as far as a long term amortization. I've seen some municipalities in Pennsylvania do forty for some larger sewer transactions, sure. but mostly it's about thirty years is the max. Uh, it's really a question of cash flow on determining how, how do you want to amortize things or the structuring of the debt itself. So based on our current plans, again, these aren't finalized, we'd probably amortize this on average about 27 years. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? I, you're going to see me again, by the way, hopefully, uh, to answer any other further questions. But obviously, I'm, I'm here to help you on anything else. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Plessinger. Thanks. I guess tonight you'll consider this a little later. So, so right. On our agenda, um, uh, oh, item 15, 16 maybe, um, will be us to, to allow the um, invitation for bids from the uh, from uh, select underwriters. I'm going to take off. That's okay. Unless you, and, but if you have any questions, you can... Well, exactly. now that you say that, I will just ask my colleagues once again, does anybody other, have any other questions for Mr. Schlesinger? Um, you are dismissed. dismissed. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> With the thanks of a grateful board. Thank you, Mr. Schlesinger. Uh, the next item on our agenda is uh, commission, Commissioner Committee updates. Um, um, I invite any of my colleagues to volunteer any updates from their committees. Well, since Mr. Schlesinger just went first, I'll, I'll just note that the Finance Committee did meet December 13th to sort of discuss generally this yeah, strategy and plan move forward. I think it's actually noted in his little uh, noted. Yeah, thing. yeah, December the thirteenth, finance committee meeting to discuss financing plan. Well, um, obviously that was a very productive meeting. Thank you, Commissioner McCluskey. Um, any other commissioner have any other uh, reports from any committees they'd like to share? Hearing none, uh, I will now move to the police department crime update, Chief. Mm. <clears throat> Chief and Deputy Chief. Welcome back. Happy New Year to you both. Thank you, Commissioner. This is, uh, we'll have a little conversation on the new parking app. I think there are some uh, concerns, and we'll try to walk through it and answer any questions. So I think Commissioner McCluskey's on top of that. 
<laughs> so I'll do my crime report first, <laughs> and then we'll talk about that. So uh, thank you, commissioners. Uh, Chief's report for December 2022, 32 criminal arrests, two juvenile arrests, 76 traffic citations, 22 non-traffics, 107 warnings, 356 parking tickets were written. At a robbery at the Verizon store, 625 Westchester Pike, employees reported two black males that stole display phones from the store. The males were last seen fleeing on Woodbine towards Minot in a black Nissan. Uh, they approached the iPhone display. Uh, the manager observed them tampering. They pulled the uh, um, iPhones off of the display, and they implied that they had a weapon in their pocket and took off. The investigation is continuing. 1600 block of Hampton Road. Residents uh, returned home from a day of work and discovered unknown actors had uh, pried open a bed, a bedroom, a basement window, and taken some cash and uh, jewelry. Uh, motor vehicle thefts on 12 3, 500 block of Woodland. Um, victim reports of theft of 2017. Hyundai were parked on the street. The vehicle was recovered in New Jersey, and a, vehicle, and a juvenile was taken into custody. 403 Westchester Pike. Victim report, reported she parked her 2020 Hyundai in the parking lot. At the end of the workday, the vehicle was uh, missing. This vehicle was involved in pursuit in Philadelphia and uh, wrecked. Philadelphia PD did make an arrest. Theft from autos and attempts. 1300 block of Darby Road, Cadillac converter, uh, car alarm on the 100 block of Strathmore Road. Somebody, uh, the uh, homeowner observed a, a male wearing a white hoodie and a red uh, hat trying to enter his vehicle. The actor did flee. The camera was unable to capture the image. On a block of uh, East Park Road, unlocked Hyundai was entered on the street. Uh, 1200, I'm sorry, 100 block of Ormond, a uh, Jeep was entered. $20 of loose change was stolen. Uh, 1217, 100 block of Brookline Boulevard, Cadillac uh, converter theft on a Honda, Honda Odyssey. Um, on 1217, unit block of uh, Upland Road, another uh, Cadillac converter, another Honda. Uh, unit block of steel, Cadillac converter from Mitsubishi. Um, and that happened around 315. Uh, 1219 overnight, 12 on a block of Westchester Pike. Uh, victim reports uh, three jewels were taken from a, a work van and then uh, Upon investigation, they found that another employee may have taken the uh, tools. A Cadillac converter taken on the unit block of Mifflin. Um, another one on the uh, unit block of Park on 1219 for IKEA. Uh, 100 block of War, a Cadillac converter. Um, video showed a white vehicle driving in front of his neighbor's house at 2046 hours. I uh, couldn't get anything else on the video. Um, 12, uh, I'm sorry, on 1220 unit block of Myrtle, police responded to a report of sawing sound coming from the street. A homeowner heard a noise. Police surveyed the area located a white Audi. Detective Fuller did locate two males who were taken into custody. A search warrant was approved and four stolen Cadillac converters were found in the truck, in, uh, truck of the Audi. Uh, both males were charged with theft. And that investigation is ongoing. Purse stolen from a um, vehicle on the 2800 block of Morris while the homeowner was uh, unloading groceries. K9 usage, assist uh, state police, uh, 20 uh, Paper Mill Road uh, had, had a pursuit. A, the driver of the vehicle jumped off the bridge, a 50 foot bridge in this Medley Park. I uh, believe the suspect had a firearm uh, after finding an extended magazine in the vehicle. A K-9 Bodie did track the vehicle, uh, tr track towards the, the creek where the firearm was later discovered by the K-9. 956 Railroad, during a domestic uh, uh, dispute, a male uh, resident threw a cell phone outside, uh, was not located by the K-9. 116 West Township, burger alarm at Lowe's. Uh, the manager asked we check the interior of the store uh, with negative results. Uh, says PSP at your different township after uh, foot pr pursuit and chase. K-9 Axel assisted with the search and all three actors were arrested. Um, and then frauds. We had 10 mail fraud cases uh, this month when the investigation is ongoing. We've been in contact with the postal authorities uh, with some prodding uh, uh, from uh, the Pennsylvania Ch uh, Chiefs of Police Association because we were having some difficulty getting uh, moving forward with the postal inspectors. We, we finally have uh, uh, made, uh, made some inroads with them and, and prosecution is ongoing. So. Mr. McCluskey, you got a question? About no, 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 you know? Okay. Uh, so, Connor? Could you please explain the app? <laughs> yes, yeah, certainly. So, uh, 
the uh, all of the parking, uh, the uh, mobile app is, is up and running. It's been uh, up ready for a, a couple of weeks now. So uh, because it was new and we had issues, uh, not issues, uh, concerns with senior citizens and people who had flip phones who couldn't get the app and had didn't know how to operate it. So we, we cut back on the enforcement of all the parking lots. We still enforced on the street, but we wanted people to get used to it. And anybody came in with a parking complaint that was legitimate, we dismissed the fine. This is not going to happen very long because it's coming to an end probably tomorrow or the next day. So uh, we are going to be enforcing it again. But the app is very easy to use. Every, um, par every parking lot has, what's the easiest way to show this? Every parking lot has this sign uh, and it's, it's very easily done. But anybody who does not have a phone or a <clears throat> can download the app on a flip phone or just doesn't know how, you can call 877-727. Five two <clears throat> five two eight one, and uh, you can leave. Uh, you can uh, do your uh, parking through there. So, it's two hours parking on the street, uh, which you can extend at any time from your phone. Uh, it's ten hours parking in the lot. So if you go there at six o'clock at night and go to put money in the meter or go on the app, it'll tell you it's free parking after six o'clock. So you don't have to worry about that. And like I said, you can extend the app by phone. By phone. Also, we added meters in all the public municipal lots uh, f and they'll, they'll be marked for senior citizen parking. So you can still use uh, quarters, dimes, nickels in the meters. Uh, you don't have to use the app. So we felt that we wanted to give the senior citizens uh, uh, parking closer to the street. And if they have problems using the app, they don't have to, they can just use the quarters. So we have eight meter lots, uh, meter spots in the Brookline lot, six in Oakmont and three in uh, the South Ardmore lot. Uh, so uh, the signs will be on them tomorrow, but the meters are up and operating. So uh, it has improved. We have two uh, variable message boards in each of the two parking lots, uh, messaging that if you have a problem, call this number and somebody will help you through it. But we have at minimum calls, so people are getting used to it. I think it's, it's a plus. It is much easier to use. And no matter where you go, uh, city of Philadelphia, outside of uh, Philly and uh, Jersey Shore, they all have it. So. Well, a lot have have a complaint about the pricing, like the, the pricing? fee. Yeah, there is a fee that you have to pay. That's, to, that's correct. That's a lot because they'll put in dimes in this one, but in the other one, you get charged a fee to even use the app. That, that's correct. Deputy Chief, you want to address that? Um, with any of the parking systems, even the one we had prior before Flo Flowbird, they do charge a fee. That's all part of the, the, the price of the parking is being passed on to the consumer, but that's all incurring fees that the township would have to pay for to have the uh, software available to, to do the flow board. But wherever you go, like you go to the Shore Philly, they're all, the fees are the same within, you know, a couple cents here and there of, of every place you go. And there, there has been conversation, why do we have parking meters? Uh, if, you, if you don't have parking meters or pay for parking on the street, people will park there all day and it kills the businesses. You won't get that back and forth. I can to that. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's uh, very uh, important to keep <clears throat> that moving. I, I've had that conversation with a number of people that I, I, I understand frustration, but the parking meters, it, it, this is by no means a, a money making for no. the township. It's designed to help the businesses because if someone right. goes and parks in that spot, which, you know, we've had that problem in other lots, if they park in that spot for 10 hours, there's nobody going into Cat's Pharmacy. There's nobody going in to, to, to Hereford Grill. The, the businesses, you need the meter to keep the churn going on, on the parking spots so that no one's parking there to just go about their day. Um, and that's the purpose. That's the sole purpose. And, you know, you mentioned Philadelphia. This is also the, the day this was installed. We had meetings in, in Lower Marion. Lower Marion uses the same app. It's, it's Radnor. It's, um, wouldn't be surprised if it's in media soon, shortly. Chief, Thank you, uh, Sorry, Brian. just a brief question. Um, you know, uh, one of the concerns that I have is obviously with, you know, our, our senior population that might not be as technologically savvy having, you know, having flip phones, smartphones, and so on. I know that you had indicated there are certain spots that are certain uh, lots that have designated spots just for them. Yes. And the signage is going to be going up the shortly. Is that correct? Them this week. They're making the signs this week. Okay. So. Um, as, you know, obviously, I hope that the number of spots dedicated to that would, would, will be sufficient to address any kind of uh, usage needs. But in the event that, you know, a month, two months, six months down the road, we find that maybe it would be beneficial to maybe add a spot to that, to that group, is that something that, that can be done? Easily done. Okay. We didn't want to overload a lot with meters. 
Uh, we want this just as a thought after the fact that we realize it could have been a problem. So uh, our process, thought process is let's add some meters, see how it works, and if we have to add more, we will. And uh, I think that you know, and there's no way for us to know that the senior citizen parking there. So I'm sure we'll get complaints on that. That you know, so and there's no way to enforce that. We're just making it. Hopefully, people will be courteous enough to realize that you know I got good, two good legs. I can walk an extra ten feet and allow a senior citizen to park in, in those lots. So we'll monitor very carefully, make any changes as needed. Any suggestions? You. If you get any complaints, let us know, and we'll work through them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you, chief and deputy chief. Our next item is a township auditor update. Mr. Anderson. Hello. First off, go Eagles. I was a little nervous at the end there, but they pull it out and now they're number one. I also want to remind all Eagles fans to celebrate January 14. It is the 27th anniversary of the last time the Dallas Cowboys have played in the NFC Championship game. Same with uh, January 28th, the 27th anniversary of the last time they played in the Super Bowl. But um, <laughs> regarding this meeting, I reviewed all the expenses and warrant, uh, warrants for this meeting. I found no irregularities. All my uh, questions were answered to my satisfaction. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Uh, next on our agenda is uh, our township manager update from our own Mr. Berman. Thank you. Um, so I gave a report on some upcoming utility work in the township. I, uh, I spoke through the report, but I didn't have anything to present. This evening I put together a PowerPoint because I understand that these things are better, better when you see them than when you hear them. So there have been several meetings with PICO and Aqua to make plans for what's coming up in 2023. And just for background, the utility companies perform their excavation work and then they temporarily, temporarily restore their trenches. And generally it takes about 30 or 45 days for those trenches to settle before they can do the final mill and overlay and the final resurfacing. So at this point, anything that is not resurfaced is going to likely wait until uh, spring due to the asphalt plants pretty much shut down for the winter. Um, However, that final restoration on township roads will be a full width mill and overlay and on state roads, it's typically only the running lane or the travel lane. So this year, uh, they're already working in the neighborhood uh, with Woodcrest, Morris, Oakford, Aubrey, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Oakford from Aubrey to Point Reading, um, George's Lane, St. Mary's. They've already started some work there and they'll be working there um, probably through the middle of the year. Um, there's additional work on some of the other roads in that neighborhood that will probably wait um, a few months before they get into those roads. So they're going to do a chunk at a time and they keep moving. And this is a water main replacement project. Again, once these roads are done, we'll have a full width mill and overlay pretty much throughout that neighborhood. Next, we have Pico working on Rittenhouse Circle, um, and that's a, a four month project, give or take. And when I say it's a four month project, that's for the excavation work and the uh, gas main replacement. The rest, the final restoration will take place later. Again, like 30 to 45 days later. We have uh, Pico Gas working on Surrey Road as well. That's about a five month project. And again, final restoration after 30 to 45 days. We have a Pico gas main project currently on Howell Lane and Mount Pleasant Road, and this is where it gets a little complicated. Um, and you'll see on the next slide that they're actually going to be doing the majority of the roads in that neighborhood with new gas mains. And again, we'll get the full width mill and overlay, but they're starting with Howell and Mount Pleasant because they're going to need to accommodate traffic for this Lawrence Road aqua water main replacement project so that's scheduled to start to start sometime in march and will last through about midsummer um, they're going to detour lawrence road weekdays from 9 a.m to 3 p.m and the detour route here is going to be directing motorists down uh, westchester pike and over uh, eagle road so interestingly i did say that when the work was done they would only be resurfacing the running lane on the state roads. 
In this case, Lawrence Road is on the PennDOT's list for resurfacing this year. So the good news, if there is any, is that we'll get the full width mill and overlay of Lawrence Road in that whole stretch there. Um, and incidentally, also on PennDOT's list this year are Brookline Boulevard from Darby Road to Erlington Road and Haverford Road from Karakong Drive to the boundary with Lower Marion Township. Next area where they intend to work is gonna be Aqua. It's a water main replacement on Glendale Road. Um, I wrote detour in there. Uh, that's a typo. It's, it's not going to be detoured. Uh, as we understand it at this point, they're gonna be flagging for that project. More to follow on that. Uh, future project this year on Norman, Leadham, and uh, Treaty Road. And a future gas project this year on Darby Road from College Avenue to Dartmouth Lane. Lots of details still to be worked out. And finally, a uh, aqua water project, uh, uh, part of a water main along Landover Road from County Line to the apartment complex there is going to be replaced. And so this presentation will be posted on our website so that people can get a feel for what exactly is happening rather than just <laughs> listening to me babble about it. And the other thing I wanted to mention is that uh, thanks to uh, Jim McCann's, we have a uh, COVID booster uh, session, a clinic set up for this room on February 14th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Berman. Uh, may I ask a few questions? Uh, you may, Commissioner Gondek. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Berman, uh, with regards to this, just a couple quick questions. One is an issue curbs are always a sensitive matter in the township um as with many townships and so with a lot of this road work going on there's going to be a lot of milling done by and resurfacing done by these uh these independent contractors that the state's bringing in to do the work and i guess my question to you is if the milling is not done correctly it has the, the ability to impact kind of the curbing um do we as a township are we monitoring this or is there uh, how do we ensure that the these outside contractors that are coming in are kind of complying with what they're supposed to be doing yes we are monitoring that we we do issue permits for this work and representatives of public works will be out there to uh, oversee the work and make sure that the curbs are getting the reveal that they need to okay it's it, it may not be more than what it is now but we're not going to certainly make it any less the uh, the other question I have, and, and this you, you might not know the answer to, but with regards to that, you were talking about the gas mains. Uh, are, ga are uh, residential gas meters being replaced in that process? I, I know that there were some gas meters replaced over the past summer. Is that going to be part of the work that's coming up? Interestingly, um, hundreds of gas services yeah. were done this year. In I'm sorry, last year in 2022. Um, from what they're telling us at this point in time, and that's all we can base it on, there's no gas service work um, on a large scale like they did last year. So okay. they haven't informed us of any major projects to that effect. Okay, thank you. Does anybody else have any questions for Mr. Berman? Hearing none, uh, thank you, Mr. Berman. Um, next item on our agenda is the approval of our minutes. The, uh, the, this would be the second budget and regular meeting minutes of December 12th. Um, as well as the reorganization minutes from last week, January 3rd. I will entertain a motion. Move to approve the meeting minutes of uh, December 12th or 2022 and the reorganization minutes of, Jan of Jan January 3rd. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any questions, comments, additions, or deletions to these minutes? Hearing none, uh, Mr. Berman. Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. The next item on the agenda is approval of warrants. Motion to approve the following warrant. Number one, 2023, totaling $3,327,869.87. General and sewer fund payroll, December 22nd, 2022, in the amount of $718,804.98. 
general and store fund payroll January 5th, 2023 in the amount of $1,028,004.75. $1, General fund disbursements, number one, 2023, in the amount of $941,718.32. Sewer fund disbursements, number one, 2023, in the amount of $192,660.12. Community development block grant fund disbursement, number one, 2023, in the amount of $304,859.70. Capital Projects Funds Disbursement, number one, 2023, in the amount of $93,487.84. American Rescue Plan Fund Disbursement, number one, 2023, in the amount of $35,593.53. Credit Card Statement Ending December 27, 2022, in the amount of $12,740.63. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Berman. Commissioner Gonda. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. Next item on our agenda is ordinance number P1 of 2023. This is the first reading of a traffic ordinance. Mr. President. Commissioner Trombetta. I'd like to make a motion to adopt the first reading of ordinance number P1 2023 establishing traffic restrictions on the following highway special purpose parking in front of 2726 Morris Road, Ardmore, PA. Second. I have a motion to second. Any questions or comments about this ordinance? Hearing none, Mr. Berman. Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. We now move to resolutions in our agenda. Next item on our agenda, resolution number 2293 of 2023, uh, referring to document destruction. Mr. President, I'll make a motion to adopt resolution number 2293-2023 that the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Hafford, County of Delaware, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, in accordance with the Municipal Records Manual, hereby authorizes the disposition of public records. Second. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Wexler and Commissioner Hart. Um, do we have any questions or comments? It's yeah, one quick thing. This is something that we do every year, and it's allowed. And I just want to ask, who's the com com company that we're ha having to do, do this? You are correct. Uh, Commissioner, everything you just said, we use Wigan Shredding. We've used them for the last several years. Right. Thank you, Ms. Cuthbertson. Uh, any other questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, Mr. Berman. Commissioner Gondek? Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp? Yes. Commissioner McCluskey? Yes. Commissioner Cavender? Yes. Commissioner Quinn? Yes. Commissioner Hart? Yes. Commissioner Wexler? Yes. Commissioner Trombetta? Yes. Commissioner Holmes? Yes. Next resolution, resolution number 2294 of 2023. This is an annual fee schedule. Motion to adopt resolution 2294-2023, approving the annual fee schedule for 2023. Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, any questions or comments? <coughs> Hearing none. Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. Next item on our agenda is resolution number 2295 of 2023, annual professional consultant fees. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to adopt resolution number 2295-2023, approving annual professional consultant fees. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Berman. Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. 
Our next item on the agenda, resolution number 2296 of 2023. This is the authorization to solicit proposals for our series, for our anticipated series 2023 bond issue that Mr. Schlesinger addressed earlier today. I'll entertain a motion. President, motion to authorize the township to solicit proposals from financial institutions for underwriting services with respect to the township's proposed series 2023 bond issue and authorizing certain actions to be taken preliminarily to in contemplation of the issuance and sale of the township of such new bond issue. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Um, any questions or comments on this uh, resolution? Uh, hearing none, Mr. Berman. Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. Uh, the next item on our agenda it refers to the draft comprehensive plan. Uh, Mr. President, a motion to refer the latest draft comprehensive plan back to an ad hoc Comprehensive Plan Steering Committee for revision as to form and substance in accordance with the recommendation of the Planning Commission. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, Mr. Berman. Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. We now move to contract awards. First contract award for professional services, uh, Glendale and Vermont Roads. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. President, I make a motion to award a professional services contract in the amount of $65,047 to Pannoni Associates for the phase one engineering services required for the Vermont Road and Glendale Road intersection improvements project subject to approval of an agreement in form and substance by the township solicitor. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments in this contract? Hearing none, Mr. Berman. Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. Next item is proposed action on our behalf regarding the cooling towers at the stadium. Yes, I make a mo motion to reject all bids or uh, submitted for cool, 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 cooling towers and approval to re rebid the pro pro project. Second. second. Yeah. I have a motion and a second to reject all bids. Um, any questions or comments? Hearing none. Commissioner Sorry. Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. Uh, our next uh, contract is within Parks and Recreation. This will be for playground equipment at Elwell Park. I will entertain a motion. Mr. Uh, Mr. President, President, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the purchase of playground equipment for Elwell Park from Compan. Let's plan. Austin, Texas, under CoStar's contract. 014161 in the amount of $43,813.29. Payment to be made from CDBG funds. Second. Uh, I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments? Mr. Berman? Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. Uh, the next item on the agenda is for me, uh, the sixth ward commissioner, to make his environmental advisory committee and senior citizen advisory board uh, appointments. Um, I must regrettably defer those. For now, I do not need to wait um, to the next regularly scheduled meeting or work session to make those appointments as they are commissioner appointments. Uh, as opposed to appointments uh, to the whole board. So I assure my township manager and colleagues and citizens, I will do those appointments in the next several days. Um, next on the agenda, 
Continuation of Citizens Forum for non-agenda <coughs> items. Um, continuation of the Citizens Forum for non-agenda items. Um, uh, this is where, um, again, uh, members of the public are invited uh, to come forward, speak on uh, any topic um, that was not otherwise covered on the agenda. Although they're free to speak on an agenda item if they'd like. Um, I ask people to confine themselves to uh, three minutes or as close to that as they can be. Um, and let me uh, begin, um, as I always do, on the left. Uh, anybody on this side, the first row, who'd like to speak? Is there anyone in the second row? Who'd like oh, to sir, please. Hi. Uh, good morning. Or good morning. Yeah. <laughs> Long day. Um, Brian Ramona hit, uh, from Belfield Avenue. I had a question uh, about the um, implementation of the plastic bag ban. Um, seems to have gone smoothly. There was some decent publicity on it. Question I have, is there going to be a follow-up to see about how businesses have implemented that and whether there has been, which I anticipate there will be some bleed over into other townships for folks that will shop at other locations. For example, maybe somebody at the Giant at Haverford will not go to the Giant in Haverford. They may go to Marple or Springfield because they want to get plastic bags. I don't think there'll be a ton of that, but I'm sure that there will be some. Will there, will there be an evaluation of how the program has worked and, and some numbers on that? Uh, just something that I was curious about. The other thing I was curious about, um, the Glendale and Vermont intersection is important to me because I live within, a few, my residence is within uh, several blocks of that. Um, I have not seen the plan, so that's, partly on me. I, I don't know if, if uh, Pannoni has provided that publicly yet. Um, is it going to involve the property that was acquired on Vermont Road that is in the floodplain? I was just curious whether that would be involved and whether the fact of the, the location of the, being so close to a floodplain was going to impact what was going to be done at that intersection. So those are some questions I had and Happy New Year to all of you. Thank you. Happy New Year to you too. Um, I will. Um, I can answer those. Um, yeah. Do we? Um, let's go through all the. Yeah, anybody I, else? Wants they're good questions, but the purpose of the, this portion of the study is for Pannoni Associates to do it concisely what you just asked about. They're going to do a topographical overlook of the properties. They're going to evaluate the intersection. They're going to look at the private properties there, make an evaluation as to what type of thing that we can put in there. PennDOT's got some preferences for certain type of traffic mitigations. They like roundabouts. We don't know if we have the space for a roundabout, uh, but the purpose of this study is for the engineer firm, Pannoni Associates, to look at it from a map point of view, logistical, floodplain, and everything to see what can be done. So this is the initial stage of doing that with the grant money that we receive, so, okay. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Wexler. And uh, with regard to the bag ban, it is um, now nine days old. I'm not um, sure yet about the follow-up. Um, I would, I'm going to go out on a limb here and suggest that if we do have some large exodus of shoppers um, from uh, some of our businesses to corresponding businesses in other townships that um, um, aren't as environmentally conscious as we are in Haverford Township. Um, I think those businesses are going to be incentivized to tell us that and to provide that information. I'm not aware of, frankly, don't expect to um, ask anyone in the township with doing that analysis. But as I said, I don't believe that that's going to be data kept from us if, if there is an appreciable um, you know, consequence of that. Um, but, um, that doesn't mean that we didn't hear your request and won't take it under consideration. So thank you for that. Um, uh, the next, oh, yes, sir. Um, I, what, it had been my plan that we'll, we'll hear comments and hear questions and then, and then answer them all. So we may not all answer them. Uh, individually, but af after each person speaks, just for purposes of getting through this quickly. But please, sir, go ahead. 
Yeah, my name's Michael Lee. I live in Fairland Avenue in the First Ward. Um, my comment is just how we generally do business now the last couple of years in Haverford Township. I learned about the plastic bag ban through the patch. I learned about zoning these, a comprehensive plan through a neighbor. I learned about the parking app in the patch again. And it seems to me as though these things impact everybody in the township. People in the township should have a say. It shouldn't be just a bunch of people sitting up here making decisions about how people live their lives. And the other thing is you spent a lot of time talking about what looks to be massive debt that the township is taking on. It seems to me as that is something that should also be up, up to the citizens and not to you guys. And it's easy to have uh, people that people vote on. So anyway, that's my comment. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Is there anyone else in that row who'd like to speak? Is there anyone in the row behind that row who'd like to speak? Moving to the right, is there anybody here in the front row? Uh, anybody in the second row would like to speak? Yes. Good evening, everyone. My mm -hmm. name is Patty Schwab. I'm from 217 North Morgan Avenue, Ward 9. And I first of all want to thank you all for doing a great job and really taking care of our township. I've been here lifelong, and I really enjoy it. But I am here in response to the Park Mobile, which I have to say has... Um, I guess frosted my cookies would be the best example. <laughs> With all due respect, and I really appreciate all that you guys do. Um, it's so National Law Enforcement Day, remember? Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure, sure we should frost anybody's cookies on right. National <laughs> Law Enforcement Day. <laughs> this is true. Yeah. Um, I think the timing of the rollout of Park Mobile was poorly timed. To do it in the holiday season, in the middle of the winter, is completely unfriendly to the residents and to the business people. I have stood in the parking lot of Oakmont. I, um, anybody who would know me, I'm a big fan of Havertown Grill. I'm there quite frequently, and I have watched people who I've helped try to download the Park Mobile app have turned around and said, forget it. I mean, one man just said to me, I'm just going to get another barber. I'm out of here. Another woman, she couldn't stand. She's on a cane. She's having a hard time. This is repeated over and over again. Um, so I really think... There should have been more advance notice. I think the fact that the kiosks do not accept change, does not accept dollars, and doesn't accept credit cards is un um, just unfriendly, and it's unnecessary. You're right. I have, if you look at my phone, I have uh, Meter Up. I have My True Park because I go into Philly. I go to other places. But all those kiosks accept dollars, coins, and credit cards to give the consumer an option. So I'm really concerned that the businesses are getting hurt, and then I'm getting hurt as well. The surcharge, someone has to pay for it. I get that. No issue with that. But every time I up my time, I get surcharged again. So it's a 45 cent surcharge. So I go park and I want to park for a dollar or for an hour. It's 45 cents surcharge. It's 50 cents to park. I'm there. Oh, I need a little bit more time. It's another 45 cents. Which brings me to the other issue with it. Your increment of times is hourly. Anybody else is 15 minutes. So you can do 15 minutes, you can do 30, 45, you know what I mean? If I'm sitting at Havertown Grill and I'm gonna go over the hour and I need to extend it, I gotta pay another surcharge and another 50 cents. To be honest with you, I was paying a quarter before and if I need to, I could just run out. And, you know, in Brookline Boulevard, I paid the 90 cent, 95 cents that it was to find out that the store was shut closed. So then I'm going, I'm like, oh, they're closed. And I just paid for all that. And it's just, it's just unfriendly. In addition to that, the six meters you put in, really nice. But if I'm number seven, or if I'm not a senior citizen, which I'm not there yet, I'd like to be soon. You know, I'm gonna hopefully I live that long, right? I have to then park somewhere else. There's 40 lots. There's 40 spots in there. And the only one of those is for the handicap. So if you have two handicap spots, you have one handicap meter, are they supposed to fight over it? Like, it just seems like it's unnecessary if you could just have a kiosk that works, that accepts money, credit cards, and cash. And also, yet you're expecting that the person that parks in these lots always has a cell phone on them and or always carries a phone. I mean, have you used the parking lot? Have you used the parking lot? I'm just curious. Do you use any of them? I have not. 
Okay. So I know I believe I'm not a good person to your ask. numbers up on the board. Is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> yes, right? I'm going to defend Commissioner McCluskey right no, now. No, no, I know it's not him. Not, I feel yeah. bad. I felt bad for you. When I it's saw okay. that go up there, I thought, oh, dear God, this man's going to be overwhelmed. You didn't feel so bad as to take it down. But anyway. No. <laughs> no, do you know why? Yeah. Because if I took it down, then people wouldn't come here and then you wouldn't have heard, right? Yeah, so yeah. Although, it just would have been me. I will just say, well, well. I'll, I'll reserve it. Yeah, no, no. And I did not mean to interrupt you. You did ask me no, a direct question. And my answer fine. is no, I haven't used them yet. And um, um, <clears throat> I do have um, uh, my own strong feelings. I'll share at the end of the, uh, of the meeting about the um, uh, about parking applications. Um, but um, that said, please go on. Yeah, so I mean, I want to like really, I love the idea of the Park Mobile. I understand the idea of Park Mobile. I, it's on my phone. Uh, but I think it could have been done, like I said, better. And I think there needs definitely to be some adjustments. And like I said, the timing increments in particular is a huge thing. And I think you need to have something other than a phone number for people to call when they can't do Park Mobile. There has to be other options. You've got to be able to put coins and dollars and credit cards. I mean, that's just, we are the only, down the shore you mentioned, sir, they accept quarters, <laughs> they accept dollars and credit cards at the, at the meters, not only just the kiosks. And I think we, we're supposed to take care of our, our businesses, too. So that's all. But thank you for listening. Thank, thank you. you. Um, is there anyone else in that row who would like to speak? Is there anyone else in the row behind who would like to speak? Major Peterson. Uh, H. Ross Peterson, United States Army, retired. Um, Derwin Drive. So I, I think back in time, there's a fellow, glad Mr. Schlesinger's not here, Arthur, Arthur Schlesinger Jr., okay? He was very well educated. Went to the Phillips Academy prep school for uh, young men. And I think he did his undergraduate work at Princeton and then went on to Harvard. Otherwise, maybe a backflip. You know, maybe he went to Harvard and then Princeton. I, I forget. But in the early 1980s, this very well-educated individual said of the United Soviet Socialist Republic, USSR, that's a very viable political and economic entity. And it was far superior to the United States of America. In fact, it would outlast the United States of America. Well, in late 1991, we saw the fall of the USSR. And the takeaway on this is very intelligent, well-educated individuals can make faulty decisions. And our Haverford Township ban on the single-use plastic bag is an instance where intelligent people have made a faulty decision, okay? When you look at the ordinance, in the purpose and findings in section B, paragraphs four and five, there's some data about the United States of America, how many billion of bags are discarded. Well, that's great, but I live in Haverford Township. What's the data there? And there is no data. Why is there no data? It's not to be gotten. In paragraph seven, we talk about cleanup costs for the parks, the roads, the streams, the trees, waterways, and rivers. How much, how much uh, cleanup cost on an annual basis do we incur at Haverford Township? We have no data. Now imagine if the cleanup cost annually to remove these single-use plastic bags was $5 million a year. I'm sure Mr. Berman would lean forward and mention that into his microphone. But it isn't $5 million a year. And I'm sure if it was $5 million a year, that value would be in the ordinance, because that would really sell the banning of single-use plastic bags. But it isn't there. And it's not there because that's not the case. Essentially, we have no data. And why? Because our spend is inconsequential. It's like the equivalent of a toothless Kensington and Allegheny crackhead and his spend for, for chewing gum annually. There is none, okay? So it's not based on economics 
But what about the environment? You know, when we look at Peter Puglianese's EAC PowerPoint presentation, he'll talk about the Midway Island Hawaii turtles. And I've never been to Midway Island Hawaii, but those turtles accidentally see a single-use plastic bag, and they think it's a jellyfish, and they ingest it. Now, Midway Island, Hawaii is 5,400 miles from Haverford Township. Just how many Haverford Township bags do you think the Midway Island, Hawaii turtles are accidentally ingesting? Well, I'll hopefully tell you, zero. zero after now. It's so. zero. Exactly. So there's what W. Edwards Deming would say is information that's not data. It's irrelevant to Haverford Township. Okay. So what about the negative environmental impact? We, you know, we talk, we've had a uh, Pennsylvania Legislative Budget and Financing Committee that's made of the Senate and the House. It's also made up of Democrats and Republicans, and they released a report in June of 2022. And here's what they said about reusable grocery bags, plastic bags, all right, reusable ones. They have a negative environmental impact due to the insufficient number of turns. You just can't get enough use out of those bags to make them environmentally uh, beneficial. All right. Now, not too many, I don't see too many cotton bags, for example. But what this committee looked at, if one used a cotton bag, you would need 7,100 turns out of that cotton bag for it to be more environmentally beneficial than a single use plastic bag that gets one more use than when food is taken out of a grocery, uh, grocery store. Now, 7,100 turns, think about that. When you go shopping for food three times a week, you got 52 weeks in a year, that's 45 and a half years you're gonna have to ha use that, that cotton shopping bag, a cotton shopping bag. I think that shopping bag is probably going to outlast my life, okay? So I don't think it's a real viable option. When we talk about um, the, the reusable grocery bags or, or plastic bags that people bring into the supermarket with them, well, grocery store owners, they talk about shrink. Shrink is the amount of shoplifting that essentially occurs. And when people are bringing in their own bags, people with less virtue than all of our commissioners, some of them will just load up a bag and walk out without paying. Now, who's going to confront that individual in our time of probably the highest level of violence that we've seen in the last 25 years? It ain't going to happen. So the question to ask is, how many, how many grocery stores can accept a higher level of shoplifting without going out of business? Because that's what we're encouraging. I'm not Richard, even going to mention- I would like you to, to, to wrap I'm not even going to mention that, you know, the, the reusable plastic bags, they're made in China. China's a supporter of Russian President Vladimir Putin. Putin inv invaded the Ukraine on 24 February. But when we're, when we're buying those reusable plastic shopping bags at the Acme, at the Giant, we're essentially indirectly financing Putin's war on the Ukraine. That's exactly what we're doing. Major, yeah. I'd like you to wrap up now. All right. Now, paper bags, the recyclable ones, they're more damaging. This, this committee report delivered June of 2022, or uh, 2020 rather, uh, by the Pennsylvania legislature found that paper bags are more damaging to the environment than plastic bags. All right, the paper bag manufacturers, additionally, once one of their form of competition, the single-use plastic bag manufacturers, which are made in America, are banned with reduced competition, you're going to see the increase in pricing for paper bags. That's just all there is to it. When you have less competition, then nobody, the, the remaining individuals, manufacturers, don't have to offer a competitive price. 
Thank you, Major. I am going to ask you to step down now. I appreciate your comment. So in essence, I think what we've done is we've attempted to address an issue, a first effect, first order, without looking at second order and third order effects, which are far more negative than that first order effect. So thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else in that row? Anybody else who has been moved to speak? Yes. Good evening, everyone. Good my, evening. My name is Monet Riley, and I am on Glendale Road. I just wanted to, first off, I like Park Mobile, and I've used it for a long time. Um, but to the comment before about when people get out and, you know, the signs are very far away, when I was sitting, I was looking on the app, and unlike in other townships and areas, normally the zones come up on the maps. So you can see, well, this is the street I'm on, this is the zone I'm on. So, like, if it's raining outside or snowing, I could pay in my car in a zone and then go where I need to be instead of, you know, walking to the closest sign. But ours don't come up on the app. So, I don't know if that was intentional or it's just not up yet, but I think that would be helpful so that people don't have to walk down the street and see what sign or what zone they're in. Uh, uh, I understand parking. that's going so. to be fixed. Is that what you're saying? So oh, that great. was it. So thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Good Mr. Anders. Yes, I just want to comment on the uh, plastic bags. Um, yes, yeah, so cotton tote bags are, it's like 20,000 times you have to use them, but other bags like the poly, uh, and polyester, part of the pronunciation there, it's like 35 to 52 times that to use them to get it worth it, and they last very long. My bags have la held up very strongly. <clears throat> and this thing right here, it's held fish of groceries amongst a million other things through the past five years with me every day, and still going strong. Thank you, Mr. Anders. Uh, and that will wrap up. Citizens Forum for non-agenda items. Uh, we will move now to new business. Is there anybody who has any new business to bring before this board? One quick thing, Ross, you can't bring the backpacks into Wawa. Wa wa wa. <laughs> <laughs> or sunglasses or hats, right? <laughs> just, had to, just had to say that. <laughs> Commissioner Wexler. I just have one thing for Ms. Schwab. I enjoy the Haverford Grill as well, Havertown Grill, but in the Ninth Ward, we have poppies right down there on Township oh, Line, and probably. we don't have parking meters. We're kiosks down there. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, whoa, whoa. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, does anybody else want to make a shameless plug for businesses in their, uh, in, in their wards before we uh, move oh, on I to the next thing? Well, and let's be careful, folks. Yeah, where all this, <laughs> where else this goes. All right. Yeah, I'll, um, make a, I'll, I'll make it two days or three ago when you had those six or seven meters. I had to laugh because your men were installing them and they were using the emergency response truck. It was the truck that had the emergency response on it. Well, fortunately, it just needs I, I to just get out to get the oil, oil to run through it and get old gas out of it. So, you know, I'd like to I think know. of our emergency response team as the Maytag repairmen. They're there if we need them, but we just never do. Okay. <laughs> So I am now um, assuming there is no new business before the board. I will move to uh, other business. Uh, Commissioner Gandhi. Thank you very much. Uh, just a couple things I wanted to touch on. Um, the first is obviously we were here last week uh, and we voted on uh, appointing a variety of people who would express interest in the various boards and commissions uh, to the township. So I just wanted to take a moment to thank uh, not just those people who applied, but not just those people who uh, were appointed to the various boards, but to those people who applied. Um, these boards and commissions are very important to both us on the Board of Commissioners and also the township uh, as a whole. And it's a great way to get involved. Um, you know, open seats come up every week. And so um, every year, sorry, uh, come up every year. And so, you know, I encourage people, if you didn't participate this year, to think about participating next year um, and so on. And if uh, the boards and commission aren't your thing, but you still want to participate, there are lots of great ways to do it in the township. There's lots of great community organizations, the civic associations, uh, a variety of uh, horticultural programs, um, and, and just uh, the volunteer fire companies. There, there, there are a lot of ways to give back to your township. Uh, in your community, and so I would just encourage people to continue uh, participating and being members of the of uh, Hatford Township, the the community at large. 
Uh, as for the parking meters, obviously it's, um, you know, it, it's a new thing. Uh, it's, uh, you know, we've, we've got some stumbles along the way, but I think we're going to get there. Uh, the chief is uh, obviously very receptive to all of uh, the feedback, and I'm sure uh, that we're going to do everything we can to continue to improve the process. Um, the one thing I would just highlight is as we kind of work our way through uh, the new meter system is just be courteous to your, your, your fellow residents. And so when you see the, the metered spots that do have the pay meter that are for people who might not have smartphones or the technology or, the, or so on, uh, you know, if you're able to park at one of the, the, the non-metered spots and let them have that spot, um, I understand that they might be a little closer to the store, but, you know, I, I just, let's just remember to be courteous to those uh, that really do need those dedicated spots. Um, not a lot going on this month to kind of report that hasn't already been brought up in some form or fashion um, at this meeting. Um, uh, so I guess I'll just simply uh, end on uh, Martin Luther King Day, Jr. Day is coming up. Uh, it's going to be a holiday weekend for uh, some of us or uh, many of us. Um, and I would just encourage people on that weekend to, uh, you know, remember the, the man who's, uh, you know, who the holiday is named after and, you know, what he strived for in his life and what, you know, his vision was and what he believed in. And that's it. Other than that, Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, it's January. Look forward to working with the current Board of Commissioners over the next 12 months. We have a lot of, uh, a lot of exciting stuff going on. Uh, and I think that uh, we're going to work together in a really constructive manner to uh, really deliver tangible benefits to uh, the residents of this township. Thank you, Commissioner Gondek. Mr. Forsty Grubb. Thank you. And in that spirit of working together, I'd like to invite all the constituents in wards two, seven, and eight to come to a constituent meeting where um, I will be and Commissioner Quinn and Commissioner Hart, as well as various township officials to um, answer questions and have a discussion about all the wonderful things that are going on in the township and that are planned for the township. It is a very exciting time as we look forward to renovating our library to make it something that will uh, promote lifelong learning and engage and give opportunities for greater community engagement. Um, it will require a lot of um, community support and belief, but we can do it. It's going to be very exciting. Um, and um, that's really all. And so, oh, the meeting is 6.30 p.m. on January 26th right here. So I hope hope you'll come. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Forsty Grubb. Commissioner McCluskey. Um, yeah, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everyone. Um, a couple of reminders. Uh, January 28th, um, the Merwood Park Civic Association, their annual progressive dinner. So anybody uh, that's in that neighborhood or would like to partake, uh, I'm sure they'd be welcome to have you. Um, as we went over tonight, the Finance Committee uh, outlined a strategy uh, for land borrowing this year. Um, it's obviously going to be up for debate for many on this board, but I think it also outlines uh, and highlights um, the, the solid financial standing that the township is in um, that led to our, our AAA rating and it's uh, the work of many within the township. Uh, our manager, our assistant township manager, our finance director uh, work over a number of years uh, to get us to this point to have our finances in a position to where uh, Moody's evaluates us as, as AAA um, and it's part of planning. Um, you know, the, the borrowing that is being done today is something that we've talked about for the past three or four years. So none of it is a surprise that will catch uh, a rating agency off guard and will receive uh, the best possible rate. And if the rates go down in two years, um, our, our financial advisors will come back to us as they did a few years ago and suggest that we refinance. We'll be able to refinance at, at the best possible rate. Um, and that is in part because we've been fiscally sound for uh, a number of years now in terms of what, uh, how we fund our pensions, uh, both for uniform and non-uniform staff. Um, so as we discuss this, I, I think it's just important to note um, that we're in a position to, to do these sort of things uh, because of the financial position that we've put ourselves in. But what, it, what we're talking about in terms of uh, purchasing a, a, a fire, uh, 
a piece of fire equipment. We're talking about putting in solar panels. We're talking about uh, needed work that needs to be done at the Scadium to maintain it as as uh, a central location uh, within Delaware County for skating, for ice hockey, for everything else. Um, and then, of course, the library that we've talked about for a number of years. These are things that will all enhance our township in many different ways, in, in ways that, um, you know, provide safety through uh, our volunteer fire systems, provide exercise and entertainment through the stadium, and provide uh, a meeting and gathering place through through our library. And then, of course, solar panel paneling is is something that will continue our 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 emphasis uh, <coughs> and our determination to be a leader in um, being environmentally conscious, both in this Commonwealth and in our country. Um, Briefly, just because uh, I know there was some joking, but there, the third ward does have some parking, and there were some parking things over the last uh, the last month and a half. And um, I want to I want to thank the police department for uh, going through the process. Um, I think if we take a step back, uh, I there there are been recognizable. Uh, issues in terms of people being able to pay with coins or pay with cash or, or how that is done. And I think we've taken steps to try to address that. Part of the reason to switch from Park Mobile was because the app that we were using previously was not used in a variety of neighboring townships. So it wasn't um, very, it wasn't on many people's phones. Park Mobile is used in Lower Marion. It's used in Philadelphia. Um, it, it's used in a number of areas in this vicinity so hopefully uh, people that are open to using it will will be willing to use it but I also think the number of calls about coins um, I got more calls about people who didn't carry around quarters or didn't carry around cash <coughs> and we weren't providing a service to those potential customers and part of our responsibility as I said earlier, is to turn it over for the businesses. And part of our responsibility is to provide uh, availability, not just to people who want to use cash and coins. And we're going to try to do that. But it's also to provide people who in the modern world um, don't carry around coins and don't carry around cash. And it's happening at Lincoln Financial Field. It's happening at Franklin Field at Penn, where you can't use cash. I mean, these things are happening. And so if we're not adapting to that as a township for our businesses, they're going to be left behind. And frankly, as you looked at our budget and you look at neighboring towns' budgets, we have to improve the viability of our businesses in this town. And, and providing and providing this service of a, 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 an app to park seems small, but it's part of our commitment <coughs> to try to aid our businesses to exist in 2022 <coughs> and exist in 2025 and be thriving. Uh, and, and that's what we're trying to do um, while also being responsive to the, to the complaints that we've heard. So I, I, I've heard from a number of people and the police chief has obviously heard and we're trying to address all those issues. Um, but just bear with us and understand that our intentions are uh, are good, and our intentions are to try to help the the businesses that surround these parking spots. And that's all I have. Thank you, Commissioner McCluskey. Commissioner Cavender. Thanks. Um, Happy New Year to everyone. I just wanted to mention a couple of things happening uh, this month that people can be involved in. I think the first thing. There will be a public meeting on uh, a road diet that's being proposed for Haverford Road. So Haverford Road in our township runs from County Line Road all the way down to Karakung. So the road diet is being conducted, the start is being conducted by PennDOT. So they're holding a public meeting on um, the 19th of January. It's been sent out by the township, and, and we'll all continue to send it out. But I would just encourage everyone, this is going to be held on Zoom, to come find out what's going to happen with Haverford, find out what the improvements are that are possible. Uh, the way they will get that information is from people who use the road. So um, it runs all the way through the fifth ward and, and down into the sixth ward. Um, and I, uh, I think this is a real opportunity for us to push to improve the road. Uh, there may be other, other potential opportunities that can happen when we look at the traffic lights, when we look at the intersections, we look at the lanes. So um, I'm hopeful that this is going to result in some positive outcomes for the township. Um, 
Also, I wanted to mention MLK Day on the 16th at Haverford College. It's a day of service. They'll be um, conducting service activities from 10 to noon that day on campus, and all are welcome. The last thing I want to mention, just as a heads up, is that the Andy Lewis 5K is going to be changing to the spring this year. Um, they're looking at May, and um, if you'd like to be involved, it's being organized by Discover Haverford. It benefits Discover Haverford, um, and we're hoping it will be a, a good uh, celebration this year. So that's all I have. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Cavender. Commissioner Quinn. To Ke Kevin for your uh, speech about the park, park mo 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 mobile thing, so I'll continue to have everybody give you calls. About, <laughs> about, about yeah, that. We thought we recognized your writing. So you can explain, explain it more than I can. Um, and about the emails, I heard what, the, what you said, said over there, and I hear, hear that a lot, that a lot don't know what's ha ha or, or, or what's happening and stuff, and I can... I know that all nine, not nine of us up here have an email list. So if you would email your 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 commissioner, I'm sure you could get on the list. And if you go go onto the town town the town township web, web website, they they have an email too where you can get get everything as well. And yeah, or I'm just saying like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, the guy. Well, I understand, but I just wanted to point, point, point to point, point that out. And um, okay. And um, and uh, the other thing I wanted to point out is um, is Tet Tet is a Ted Tet Tet is a Testus, which was lo 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 located in a, the seventh ward, um, closed after four, 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 40 years. So I wanted to congr congratulate Lou and his fam fam family on four, 40 years. And that's great that we had, had them. And I hope that we have more. I, I hope uh, whatever go, goes into that spot, stay day, 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 days are up, or up for 40, or up for 40 year, years as well. And uh, Sher Sherry and Jer Jer Jerry and I will be ho hosting um, our wards on a, at the end of the month, and I'm thrilled about that. So we can hear about, so we can hear from everybody from our ward. And um, they also, I wanted to point to point out some someone who pa passed away who did a lot for our community. Uh, in 03, when I started to attend these board board meet, meet, meet meetings, we we used to have um, the town township press would be would be over here, and they they and they would all. Um, and there'd be two two uh, or uh, report reporters, one from the Dale, Daily News and one from the ha Haverford Press, and that was Cat Cat was Cat 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 Martin Martin, and she devo devoted a lot of time to our uh, town, and um, she pa passed away la la last la like last week. So I just wanted to thank thank her for everything that she did for our town. And um, my prayers are with Joe, who served on the school school board for years and did did, did, did a great, 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 great job there. So I, so I just want, want, wanted to uh, remember them. So, okay, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Quinn. Commissioner Hart. Yes, uh, Happy New Year. Uh, just two brief announcements. Uh, this Wednesday, uh, January 11th at 7 p.m. will be the second public meeting of the Park and Recreation Open Space Plan. It will be held at the CREC. Um, and the um, Brookline Park Steering Committee will resume its meetings mm -hmm. in, later in January with the next public meeting expected in, in March. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Hart. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Uh, Connor, thank you for bringing up Mrs. Martin. She, uh, I think Commissioner Holmes and I, when we both started, she was, she was a fixture at all the meetings. She was very fair, concise, clear. Her husband was the caricature of the New England <laughs> accent and spoke his mind. Uh, very nice people. It, it was sad to see that in the paper the other day that, that Kathy has passed away. They moved, they retired and moved up to Rhode Island and uh, in a beach house. And it's just a shame that uh, her retirement only lasted a year since they moved up there. But she was a, a lovely lady and a, a boon and would have probably answered some of the questions about the gentleman wasn't aware because she covered this township for the News of Delaware County. The Delco Times also picked up her stories, as well as the Haverford Press. So it was. Uh, so we miss the the decline of the printed press has has hurt 
us as people get away from the internet and, you know, it used to get faxes. Now you get so many emails, you don't even read them. So it is a shame, but call your commissioner. Even if his number's not published at the parking lot, it, we're, all, <laughs> we're all on your, your township car, uh, calendar, which is on your refrigerator for most people in my ward, call us. I mean, we're here to serve you, not, not to have an agenda of nine people. We are here to serve you. I can, I can say that all nine of us are civic-minded. This is a volunteer position. We, we don't really get paid for this. So uh, it, it's a labor of love. So, so call us and get informed and ask and demand to be formed. So uh, the second thing is I, I meet with the Hilltop Civic Association quarterly. So any constituent that wants to come in, my quarterly meeting is with the Haverford Civic Association. And they meet, usually meet at Bonaire. Uh, their first meeting should be this month. It's the last Thursday of the month. Uh, any Ninth Ward member or anybody is welcome to come and attend. If we have any hot topics, the police will come uh, answer questions directly. But generally, we, we take care of the, uh, any issues that they want to know about, and I'll inform them. If I don't have all the information that evening, that specific night, we'll get the we'll get the information from our department heads. So, uh, so that's my quarterly meeting it should be the last Thursday of this month with the Hilltop Civic Association at the Bonaire Fire Company. Uh, and the 16th is a day of volunteerism. I think throughout, I checked every church and every school in my ward has something going on. So if you need to volunteer, I'm not here to hype one thing, but there are many opportunities for a day of volunteerism on the 16th if if anyone is so inclined. So please just. Look at all the schools, look at anything. All the churches have something going on. So please, if you're inclined, please volunteer and continue the spirit of Dr. Uh, Dr. King. And also I'd also like to congratulate uh, Lou and Janice Testa for their 40 years. Our kids went to school together. Kids have worked over there. We know all their daughters. Uh, and it's just, a, it's nice to see Lou now doesn't have to leave a party at eight o'clock in the evening because he has to open up at 3.30 and somebody drive Janice home at night. So. Um, uh, congratulations to him on a well-earned retirement, and, and it's a loss for Havertown, but um, hopefully, as Connor said, somebody else will move in there to uh, uh, another thriving business that will serve us for another 40 or 50 years. That's all I have, Mr. Holmes. Thank you, Commissioner Waxer. Commissioner Trombetta. Thank you. Um, I'll be very brief. I just wanted to mention that there is a backyard composting workshop occurring on Monday, January 16th. It's virtual. Um, it's at 7 p.m., and you can learn about how to make free organic fertilizer in your backyard, um, learning from some of the best, uh, including Gwen Nolan of Mother Compost. And um, if you need extra incentive to participate, township residents are eligible to purchase a subsidized compost bin for $30 after attending the workshop while supplies last. Um, registration is required, so register if you're interested. Um, and I don't think I have anything else to say. Everything that's been said about Martin Luther King and the day of service, I would just encourage you to get out there. Um, but I think it's already been said, and I know you're priming up a really good speech. So um, off to you. <laughs> yeah, it might be the funniest thing anyone's ever heard. Um, uh, thanks for that pressure. <laughs> Uh, no, I wanted. I realized that I hadn't answered a couple of questions, and and they were answered by some of the commissioners. But um, um, Mr. Lee, I appreciate your comments. Um, I can assure you that we all try to communicate in in every possible way that we um, that we can, and the township does. And um, while uh, it is not a measure of our success, um, it it is in my lifetime on this board massively improved in terms of how we communicate. You also brought up the debt the township has incurred and is incurring. And, and the one thing I want to assure everybody who is watching this meeting, um, we have for, um, I'm going to say for 17 years on this board, we have looked very carefully at and tried to get the best advice we can about our financings and about our financial, um, about our financial stability. Um, we have to balance the needs, the long-term needs of the township with the short-term costs to everybody who lives here. Um, the proper balance of, of, of debt and current revenue is, is the way to do that. We've employed really, really strong professionals, starting with our assistant township manager, finance director, Ms. Cuthbertson, um, to make sure that when we are doing that balance, we're doing it in the best possible way. We're doing it in the way that not only 
hurts the township the least, but helps the township the most in terms of um, in terms of financial markets and in terms of our our future viability. So um, none of us borrow money lightly here, and we don't do it for small projects. We do it for um, very large undertakings that I think to date have all benefited the township and its property owners and residents and citizens and businesses alike. Um, but uh, that doesn't mean that I don't appreciate your vigilance and your comments um, on the issue. And I can assure you that nobody is going to stop scrutinizing um, any of the debt that we, um, that we undertake. Um, Ms., I wanna make sure I got you, is it Schmallow? Schwab, Schwab with a B, I'm sorry. Is it, okay. Um, okay, well, I understand that he had hated parking apps as well. Um, I just, for the sake, I, um, I will probably never use that app until I collect enough tickets that the police actually come to see me about that because I'm not crazy about using apps and having people keep track of you. But I say that at the same time, it's not possible to go to a movie. It's not possible to make a reservation at a restaurant or do anything without some type of app or some way that we ultimately turn over our identity to somebody else to show where we are, or what we're doing at the same time. Um, the parking is progress, but your comments are worthwhile. And uh, your comment about the timing, about an hour at a time, if, that, if, if any of these things can be fine-tuned and make better, to be made better, I assure you that we, that we will, and we'll take them very seriously. Um, but uh, as Mr. McCluskey indicated, a great deal of thought went into that app. A great deal of feedback had been received from both sides. I want to keep using the roll of quarters that's in my car versus I don't carry any money in my car. And there is one other thing to think about when we automate parking and move to a strictly virtual way of paying for it. Parking meters are basically small piggy banks located 10 feet apart throughout a township as we deal with a stretch of lawlessness in our society that I hope is temporary. Um, it reveals often a sense of desperation. As more de people grow more desperate, they act more desperately. We do not need to have throughout the township um, items that can be smashed with a hammer, a sledgehammer that might contain 25, 30, $50 of bills or quarters that at some point for somebody, the marginal cost to them of getting caught or getting hurt while smashing apart a parking meter um, does not exceed the potential benefit to them if they can crack it open and take the money. Same reason why colleges use tickets in their, um, in their washers and dryers instead of coin operated so they're not inviting petty crime. Um, that is just one, not something that's talked about a lot, but it is one of the benefits of moving to a fully automated system. Um, and um, finally, um, uh, Major, I, I'm not going to try to match you with Arthur Schlesinger. I'll just go with Arlo Guthrie. Um, if you can imagine 50 people walking into the draft and singing a bar of Alice's Restaurant and then walking out, people will think it's a movement. If one township and then another and then a city and then a county and then a state and then ultimately, the United States makes environmental moves like this. It will save turtles in the Western Pacific. It will save people in the Drake Passage. It will also save people right here from the catastrophes of environmental pollution. So I stand behind what we all did. I certainly stand behind the vote that I cast. And I just hope everybody takes a longer <coughs> look um, and a bigger picture look than just a dollar for dollar and step for step and bag for bag analysis of whether it was the right thing to do. Um, finally, I'll just uh, leave with a quote. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Martin Luther King said that. And on Sunday is his birthday. And on Monday, the day we all celebrate him here in America, um, right now in these times, of all the things he said and did, just think about that quote that day. Maybe we can make a difference. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. We are adjourned. <laughs>